Hello, my case and I watch my anime review for Glitter Force, also known as Smile Precure. And so this is a 2012 series based on, at least it serves as the ninth installment in Izumi Toto's Precure series. And um, I only had one experience with the Precure series, it's the original one. Um, I, other than that, I haven't really had much experience with Pretty Cure. Uh, personally, I've only seen clips online. I've read a few things about its anima animators and all that stuff there. And what I've noticed from the clips is that there's a very um, great animation being done in the Pretty Cure series, especially right now. And even the action scenes are very well animated from what I've seen in clips. And so, um, to get more exposure to the Pretty Cure series, I um, went on to Netflix seeing that Glitter Force is on there. This is the um, sort of English version, uh, to say the least, uh, done by Saban Brands um, to sort of, I guess, uh, profit off of the Pretty Cure series and really bring it to international audiences uh, since, you know, not many of the Pretty Cure series can be found, you know, legally online. Uh, I think only the original one is streaming on Crunchyroll. Other than that, you know, the other series are pretty hard to find. Uh, but Glitter Force is on Netflix along with uh, the 10th installments in the Pretty Cure series, pretty, uh, Glitter Force Doki Doki. Uh, but I'll be reviewing the f um, first Glitter Force, you know, quote-unquote gl first Glitter Force, uh, as, you know, basically the Netflix canon um, is shown there. Um, but this series um, is directed by Takashi Otsuka and it's written by Shoji Yonemura, who both have experience in either the Pretty Cure series or in uh, Tokusatsu series, basically your live action, you know, action series like Kamen Rider, uh, Super Sentai, you know, very uh, similar to that kind of stuff uh, there, which Glitter Force and uh, Pretty Cure um, do fit into because, you know, while I was watching this series, I did have um, this nostalgic feel uh, for your Saturday morning cartoons, you know, here in America, I'm not sure about internationally, but he was here in America, your Saturday morning cartoons with your very uh, kid-friendly humor and also, you know, kid-friendly series, which, you know, sometimes they have uh, just special messages uh, for the kids out there, and Glitter Force definitely has that uh, within its characters and within the, within the series itself, uh, spreading these nice messages of friendship, uh, love, and, you know, all this other stuff as well, and it really serves its purpose in that sort of way here. Um, nothing really too outside the box for a pretty cure series, but definitely fits in well for um, an American audience who is first exposed to this type of series uh, for the first time. And so what is Glare Force about? Well, the Kingdom of Jubiland, or Martian Land, is attacked by evil Emperor Nogo, uh, who tends to direct his world to have an unhappy ending. But it stopped when Queen Euphoria uses the last of her energy to send him away. When Nogo's minions from the Shadow Realm try to revive him by harnessing negative energy from the people of Earth, Queen Euphoria sends the messenger Candy to assemble a team of five magical girls known as the Glitter Force, or Smile Pretty Cure. The series follows the formation of the team and the adventures of the girls, as they try to fight off the enemies to collect the magical glitter charms that will enable them to upgrade their powers and revive Euphoria. And so the main motif of this series is based around fairy tales. The villains themselves, you have, you know, the big bad wolf, the um, evil witch, and also the evil ogre as well. And uh, the main character, uh, Emily, or in the Japanese version, her name is Miyuki Hoshizora, who also serves as Glitter Lucky or Cure Happy. She's really into fairy tales, that's really her big thing. And, you know, some of the big plot moments uh, revolve around fairy tales as well. The you know, Kingdom of Jubiland is the home of all these fairy tale creatures. And, you know, that's the big motif uh, in this series. And the team work together to bring about a happy ending. That's a really big thing. Um, that they always talk about, you know, villains are trying to bring an unhappy ending, while the team work together to bring about a happy ending for the people of Earth and for uh, the Kingdom of Jubiland as well. And as I mentioned earlier, um, the animation is really good uh, for Glitter Force. It's not consistent all the way through. There's some moments of not so great animation here and there, but the action scenes, especially for the bigger moments, are really good uh, for uh, Glitter Force. As the series progresses, you know, as they get more powers and their um, power starts to evolve even more, the animation style is really good. And you know, secretly, you know, I guess for me, secretly, you know, I've finally caught up uh, to the rest of the fans of Pretty Cure uh, to realize that the Pretty Cure series has really good action animation, um, especially, you know, for non-shonen uh, type of an anime series. And so it's really uh, awesome to see uh, if you're just, you know, if you're watching this with your little sibling, a little cousin, or anything like that, you know, watching it with a younger person, you know, they can enjoy all the themes and all the bright colors and the 
um, characters, and while you, while you, um, as an older uh, person, can enjoy the action scenes, the great animation, uh, if that's what you're into. Uh, for an anime series, uh, but you also have the their edited version at least of the opening theme is really catchy. Again, brain about the nostalgic feel of Saturday morning cartoons, along with the cheesy dialogue and along with some other uh, things as well. Especially the cheesy cheesy dialogue is a big thing. I want to highlight you know, the whole happy ending theme. They really bring bring that back a lot. Um, but it's all part of the theme of the story, I understand that, but it's sometimes a little too cheesy for me, uh, the dialogue is, and so, you know, the script writer for the dub version of Glare Force, at least, not sure, um, about the subbed version, I've only seen clips of that here and there, and so it's pretty reflective of what I've seen in the sub to what they translate to in the dub, but some of the things, um, could be a l little bit better, um, one of the characters, uh, Kelsey or Ak Akane Hino, who's also known as Glitter Sunny or Kira Sunny, uh, her family runs at Okonomiyaki uh, restaurants. However, it's given sort of a four kids esque localization, saying that she runs like a pizza uh, shop, which um, I guess it's kind of similar Okonomiyaki and pizza uh, aesthetically at least, but it's, you know, getting the nitty gritty in there. That's not exactly true. And so some of those localization sort of things uh, do occur, very right? four kids esque. Um, and so it's a bit of annoyance because we're like 2018, I'm discounting 2012, but still um, pretty much in the modern era. And so I think it's okay to expose you know children to these uh, sort of international sort of things and not really just localize everything to these very um, sort of, I guess, not really minute details, but really um, fickle details um, of which that don't really matter, especially with, you know, Bray Reynolds and a Pokemon when Brock said, yeah, you have these donuts, even though like what he's holding isn't actually donuts. And so... Um, you know, it seems very much of that time, and so it's pretty disappointing to have this series sort of in the modern age uh, really continue that sort of trend uh, that we saw previously. And so, Glitter Force isn't exactly uh, for me in terms of a target audience. I'm not saying um, you know if you're older or you know similar to my age, you can't enjoy Glitter Force. I certainly enjoy Glitter Force for what it is. But for what it is, it's a series dedicated and um, made for children, basically of a younger age, and that's their target demographic. And I think the characters really reflect that in terms of the themes and the character traits uh, for these characters, especially for giving uh, kids this very nice message, very nice ideas uh, to follow through in their own personal lives. Since you know sometimes uh, kids can you know be very reflective of this a TV they watch, you know very much of that sort of ilk of you know TV is rotting kids' brains, you know maybe the bad stuff, but sometimes TV can be a positive influence on children. I think the characters really reflect that here. And so as I mentioned before, Emily. Uh, she's very into fairy tales, but she's also very friend oriented. She's always about uh, smiling and very much um, making your friends happy. Uh, very much of the original title of the series, Smile Precure, it's all about the smiles, and that's how uh, the team ends up winning the day uh, in most of their battles. Uh, you also have uh, Glitter Peace or Cure Peace uh, in Lily or Yayoi Kisei in her original um, version of her name. Uh, she is very much very shy, but she's very artistic, and you know, her character trait is, at least the solver character trait, um, is that she has to have confidence within herself, especially putting yourself out there, putting your art out there, that's very much a big thing in her episode, uh, in the first season at least, where she, um, you know, she, she's, she's too, too embarrassed uh, to put her art out there, she's afraid of rejection, she's afraid that some people are going to make fun of her, for her arts, but still, it's important to put yourself out there to have confidence in yourself and what you believe in and your passions as well. Uh, another character, April, or now uh, Miro Okawa, uh, she's also Glitter Spring or Cure March. She's the oldest of six siblings. Uh, she takes on the motherly type role, especially in her family, but um, there's an episode uh, where she's a bit too serious at times, and I think. Um, the whole point of her character and the whole uh, change in her character is that it's okay to you know act like a kid sometimes and act your age. Uh, you don't have to be this responsible type all the time. And I think it's a very nice message to send uh, for kids there. And so um, another character, Chloe or Reika Aoki, uh, she is a glitter breeze or cure beauty. Uh, she is very responsible. Uh, she has all these different tasks with the student council. She's always helping out others. But um, it's also important to you know focus on. Your 
yourself sometimes. Making your decisions for yourself uh, is never a bad thing. You know, it's a it's very awesome to help people out, but sometimes you have to help yourself out first in order to help others. I think it's a really awesome message to send uh, for kids. And finally, um, character I mentioned before, Kelsey. Um, her family does run Okinomiyaki shop. However, that's not really a big trait for a character. She's very into sports, but um, there's an episode where. Um, they're all asked to have you know, their treasures. You know, what do you treasure the most in your life? And for Kelsey, she couldn't really find anything uh, for herself except for her friends. And, you know, that's a really nice, you know, big friendship um, uh, model uh, there for the, all the characters. And so all these characters uh, and their character traits really bring out good messages for kids uh, who are watching this series. And so if you're looking for a good anime to watch uh, with, you know, your little siblings or your kids, uh, Glitter Force is definitely the anime for you. Uh, as for... Um, other people who um, aren't into the cheesy dialogue or into all these other sort of I guess Saturday morning cartoon sort of things and very much these very um, kiddy sort of things. There's also great animation and great action sequences uh, for you as well. Um, from time to time here and there, uh, the plot isn't so bad. You know, it's very much uh, a simplistic sort of plot to kind of understand where the story is going to go and where the character beats are starting going to go. Um, the series is based on smiles and being happy and happy endings. And so um, you can kind of guess where the story is going to go uh, from point A to point B. Uh, but still, there's a lot of enjoyment for the series out there for all ages. And so for waiting for the series, going to give this one a B rating. Um, lots of great characters uh, in here with the five main girls and also along with Candy and Pop as well, who's voiced by Todd Hapricorn. Um, lots of great um, voice actors in here as well. Uh, Laura Bailey uh, does some voice work as well. I think she plays the main character in Emily, I believe. I don't remember uh, that there. I apologize. Uh, but there's also some great, great voice work here. Um, they are hindered by the script. Very a cheesy dialogue for a script, but they knock it off uh, very well. Uh, the antagonist, as I said, before based on fairy tales and so uh, sort of based around all of that uh, stuff here but still again great action, action sequences great animation along with great messages for kids out there watching the series and so have you already seen glitter force what is your favorite uh anime in the pretty cure franchise for your thoughts in the comment section down below also make sure to like share and subscribe as well and when you subscribe make sure you hit the notification bell so you get notified when i post videos on this channel thank you for watching my anime review for glitter force Hope you guys have a nice day, and I'll see you in the next video.